الله وكفى حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا المصطفى صلوات الله وسلامه عليه بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله من ذلك We begin with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessed name We praise him and we thank him as he ought to be praised and thanked Seeking his help, his guidance, but ultimately his forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of ourselves And from the evil consequences of our sins No doubt whomever the creator of the heavens and the earth, Rabbul Alameen, guides the, to the Sirat al Mustaqim, none can misguide, and whomever leads to straight, none can guide. I bear witness and testify that there is no God except Allah, that He is alone without partner, and that the Prophet Muhammad is his final messenger. At the beginning of this month, we all heard the command in the Quran, where Allah says, Ba'da'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. O you who believe in the faith of Islam, fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you may gain God consciousness, self restraint, or taqwa in Arabic. And then at some point you probably also heard that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said بني الإسلام على خمس شهادتي أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وحج البيت وصوم رمضان. That our religion of Islam is founded on five pillars. That we bear witness that there is no God except Allah and that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his messenger. And that we establish prayer on time, we give our zakat annually, we make the hajj to the sacred house, and we fast the month of Ramadan. And for the believer, we know, سَمِعْنَا <coughs> وَأَطَعْنَا We've heard the ayah, we've heard the hadith, we're obeying Allah. We're obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And mashallah, throughout the world you find people fasting under extreme hardship. Many of us living in, you know, the ease and comfort of the air-conditioned boxes that we run from one to the next. It's not as difficult for many of us. Though if you work in construction, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you ajr and hasanah bigger than the rest of us. So, I say that because I, I know right now of a lady, in her, she has a fourth stage cancer. This is the one right before you die. And she's fasting. But not only that, mashallah, she's a refugee. She's a refugee in a country she doesn't even belong in because of war. Stage four cancer, still fasting. This woman has excuses. She has many excuses. She's 65 or 66 years old. She could say, you know what, I'm just going to feed some poor people. Although in reality, she's probably one of the people that needs to be fed. I know a woman in her first or second trimester of pregnancy fasting. Because we all understand, yes, Allah gives us permission not to, but it's better to. As long as it's not going to harm you, of course. But these people... They understand that there's something really special about this month. Really special. And that's what we're going to talk about in this clip, but inshallah. So that we can look back at the Ramadan and look forward after Ramadan, inshallah. 
So we heard the ayah, we heard the hadith, and we just obeyed. But it's not necessarily wrong for the believer to question why. Yes, I know the why of Allah commanded me and the messenger commanded me, but the wisdom behind it. So in this first part of the flip book, we're going to discuss three wisdoms, three benefits of this month. The first one is a physical benefit, brothers and sisters in Islam. If there's one thing the medical industry can agree on, and they don't agree on a lot of things, is that they can agree that something called intermittent fasting is one of the healthiest things any human being can do. Now their mentality is, of course, that we used to be Neanderthal cavemen, and, you know, we didn't have the agriculture and the farm animals yet, and so there used to be long periods of time where we didn't eat. So our bodies became accustomed to fasting just out of necessity. But intermittent fasting is one of the most healthy things you can do for your body. Do you know what happens? Who's been to a 24-hour restaurant before? We have them in North Carolina. They're called IHOP and Waffle House. I don't know what you have them here in the North. But a 24-hour restaurant is always open. You can eat and drink in there anytime. But of course they have to clean up. But it's kind of a surface level cleaning. You know, you wipe the counters off, you refill the salt shaker. But after some time, the grit and the grime and the disgust starts to build up. And you can't just clean it while customers are in. At some point, you have to shut down and do a deep cleaning. And so physically, that's actually what you and I are doing in Ramadan. You see, when you abstain from eating and drinking from dawn to sunset each day, you shut your digestive system down, at least the upper part. And you don't realize how much energy your body puts into digesting food. But all of a sudden, when that process, <coughs> that task, is not necessarily part of your normal daily activity, all of a sudden the energy in your body can now turn to the rest of the body and see, hey, what else is wrong that I can fix? And so that's why many of us, the first few days of Ramadan, we got a headache. That was actually your body cleaning toxins and poisons out of you. So the first benefit and the first wisdom, brothers and sisters in Islam, of this month is that you're getting a tremendous physical cleansing from this month of fasting. But there's something that may have prevented that from happening. It wasn't you eating and drinking during the day, because you didn't do that. It was when it came time to eat and drink, you turned fasting into feasting. Have you ever heard these hadith? The Prophet says, The mu'min fills one intestine, and the kafir fills seven. How many of us are eating like movement? He said the stomach is the worst vessel in the human body that is filled up. So if a person must fill it, let it be a third for food, a third for drink, and a third for their breathing. But it is enough for the son of Adam to eat a few morsels of food to give them strength in their back. But we have special food in Ramadan. <coughs> The Prophet, in the best of times, وسلم, did not even mix two foods in one meal. Look at the plates today. Five or six different items on one thing. That is preventing us, brothers and sisters in Islam, from getting the full benefit of this month. And so, inshallah, what I hope happens for many of you is that your stomach shrank a little bit in this month. And when you come out the other side, your goal is to eat less. Because it is not our religion to eat like we're eating today. It's not. The second benefit, brothers and sisters, in Islam of the month of Ramadan is a mental benefit. I had the privilege of listening to a khutbah from your Imam Sheikh Omar where he mentioned the connection between Allah mentioning in the Quran that شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. That the reason you fast in Ramadan is because Allah sent the Quran down in it. Could be any month. And then he connected that back to you asking Allah every day to say إهدنا الصراط المستقيم guide me. And then the very next chapter says that he could kitab ولا رأي بفي هدى للمتقين. Okay, you ask for the guidance. Here it is. And then he beautifully connected that back to 
the fact that in Ramadan we're getting tafwa. So only the people of tafwa are going to benefit from this message. But while fasting in Ramadan, you're increasing in tafwa. Now what I want to say about that is that what is the mental benefit that you got in this month? Well, there's actually an A and a B to this. The first is you gained something called self-restraint or delayed gratification. This is where your mind overcame your body. You received the command, you implemented it in your life, your body told you no. Everybody's body in Ramadan tells them no, no, please just eat something, drink something. But you said no body, sorry nafs, I can't do that, I'm Muslim. So you're cultivating each day of Ramadan self-restraint. But the B side to that is that in the evenings, you opened up the Mus'haf and you read it. And you came to the Tarawih and you listened to it. And by the end of the month, everyone who calls themselves a Muslim has completed the Qur'an. You started at the Maghrib of the first day and before the Maghrib of Salat al-Eid, you have completed the entire Qur'an. You've read it in Arabic from cover to cover. And so now you have the entire message of the Qur'an refreshed on your mind. You know what to do now. You have a plan for the next year. You've heard all the things Allah has asked you to do and all the things He's asked you to stay away from. You've been reminded. And this is in the previous nations as well. You can read in the Bible where the children of Israel used to read the entire Torah from cover to cover in front of the whole nation. So, brothers and sisters in Islam, that review that you did is the mental benefit you got from it. See, now you have the information. You went to the school, now you're getting your ijazah. You're getting your degree in review, revision of the Quran. And I'm talking about the information in it. But you didn't get that benefit, brothers and sisters in Islam, if A, you had no time for Allah's book. There was too much Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and Instagram and WhatsApp and Netflix and newspapers and magazines. Too many balls to kick, hit, and throw. I didn't have time for the Quran, Shaykh. Shaykh Ramadan, alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. That's the point of this month. What do you mean you didn't have time for it? But the other problem is if you read the Quran so breakneck speed fast that you didn't understand any of it. You were just like, I'm going to finish this in seven days. Let's get this over with and out of the way. Is that why Allah sent the Qur'an down to us? To abuse it like this? To read it so fast, so quickly, that we didn't understand a single word of it? Or did He send it down, the qawmi yatafekkahun, to people who think? So the second great benefit, brothers and sisters in Islam of this month, is that you got the information that you needed to be guided and you cultivated the self-restraint to live that message after Ramadan is over. Finally, the third benefit of Ramadan, a spiritual benefit. In the month of Ramadan, your fasting, your self-restraint increases, your consciousness of Allah, and then there's a special gift Allah gives people who obey Him. Even if you're just doing the bare minimum. Right, we all know the famous hadith. Allah loves the person who does what they're commanded, but He loves the person more who begins to do the nawafil, the voluntary acts, until their seeing becomes the seeing of Allah. You know, they begin to be a totally guided person. That gift is found in this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe, ittaqullah. Have consciousness of Allah and believe in His Messenger. 
yutikum kiflaini min rahmatillah. And Allah will give you a double reward of His mercy. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ نُورًا تَمْشُونَ بِي وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُرْ رَحِيمٌ And additionally to His mercy, He's going to give you a nur through which you will walk and His forgiveness and Allah is forgiving and merciful. What is this nur that Allah gives the believer? There's a great imam that we should all have a great appreciation for, Imam Fakhr al-Din al-Razi. And he has a tafsir that he gives of the chapter Surah al-Nur, and in particular the ayah that talks about Allah who nurs samawat wal But in there Allah says this phrase, Nurun ala nur, light upon light. His explanation, which is very beautiful, he says this, is when Allah's revelation reaches the aql of a person. The message of guidance comes to you, it reaches you, you, you begin to process it. And then Allah intervenes in your life for you to understand what you've heard and read. What do I mean by that? Go out here and look. Just with these eyes. See all the beautiful houses? The beautiful cars, the beautiful land, the boats, the businesses, the towers. These eyes is beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Well, I people call this place Jannah. But the person who has nur, they look at this situation and they realize something. That house was bald on interest. And that business was bald on interest. And this land is bald on interest. And that person got their degree by borrowing money on interest. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that if you don't give up this practice of borrowing and lending money on interest, expect a war from Allah and His Messenger. So it doesn't look so beautiful anymore when you realize how these people are going to be punished for every bit of this, these things. That beautiful house might as well be a house in Jehennam. So the Nur, brothers and sisters in Islam, is when you stop seeing with these eyes, and you start seeing with the eye of revelation. Allah gives you the Quran, He gives you the Sunnah, you understand it, and you begin to see the world as it really is. Allahumma arina al-ashya'a kamahiyya. Oh Allah, make us people who see the world as it is. So brothers and sisters in Islam, in this month of Ramadan, in review, what you came here to do was to get physical, mental, and spiritual benefit. So that finally, after the month is over, the most important thing, you can start living a Muslim life full time. Well, we don't need any more part time Muslims in this Ramadan. We need full time Muslims. قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِ Say my prayers, we got that covered, the sacrifices, the living and the dying are for Allah, the Lord of the world. I think most of us, we do the first two. But the living and dying for Allah, how many of us are doing that? How many of us are full-time Muslims all the time? So that's our goal after Ramadan, brothers and sisters in Islam. That you and I take everything that we've granted this month, even if we only got a little bit of it, even if we did a lot of things that were wrong, even if we made some of the mistakes that I missed, <coughs> but we take whatever energy, whatever power we got in this month, and we use it, and this month is over, to be better than we were before it started. That's your goal. And that's how you use it. أقول لكم لهذا فاستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم أبدأ بسم الله والرحمن والرحيم دائما الإحسان فالحمد لله القديم الأول الآخر الباقي بلا تحول ثم صلاة وسلام صرمدا على النبي خيم قد وحدا وآله وصحبه ومن تبع
سبيل دين الحق غير مبتدع يا ايها المسلمون سيكم من نفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل We begin again with Allah's blessed name, we praise him and we thank him and we ask him to send abundant peace and blessings, exalting the mention of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bless his family, his companions, his children, his wives, and I ask the Muslim community to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which hopefully all of us are in a high bank account, savings account of taqwa right now. The last thing I'll say to you brothers and sisters in Islam is the secret of Ramadan. This is the secret of this month. Fasting is actually symbolic of your entire life as a Muslim. Every day you get up, right before the light of the sun appears, and you abstain from eating and drinking and procreational activities. So this is a command to implement it. And then the day goes along, and the sun starts to rise, and as the day progresses it gets harder and harder, and your mouth gets dry, and you get hungry. But at the end of the day, you break your fast. This is symbolic of the life of a Muslim. You see, the sun rising is symbolic of the moment the light of Islam first entered your heart. Whether you joined Islam like I did, or you were born and raised a Muslim, but you finally decided, I really want to be one. Not just I am, because my mom's name is, you know, Sophia, and my dad is Muhammad. That's the beginning. And then you start to implement the Sharia on yourself. All of it. Not just the fasting. And you're patient with that, because these are commands and prohibitions. And then you're patient, and you're patient, and you're patient, and you're patient, until finally, at the end of your life, when the sun is setting, Allah takes your soul as a believer, because you were patient with His commands. And He puts you in Jannah. And guess what Jannah is? Nothing is haram anymore. You spent your whole life lusting after that sausage biscuit. Man, I wish I wasn't Muslim just so I could eat one. They look so delicious. No problem. There's no khinzir in Jannah. All the meat's halal. You spent your whole life trying to do some kind of sin. You really struggled with yourself, but you knew this thing was wrong in Islam. No problem. There's nothing in Jannah you ever have to worry about staying away from. Whether you wanted to drink alcohol, or you wanted to have a beautiful wife, or any of these things, it's all there. It's all there. It's all there waiting for you. But this fast every day is a reminder of your life as a Muslim. From the moment the sun rose until it sets at the end of your life, just be patient with Allah's commands. Whatever He asks you to do here, it's not that difficult. But it's up to you to decide to do it. And the reward is waiting for all the people who are people of tough life. So brothers and sisters, we end today by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept our Ramadan from us. Allahumma inna nasaluka bi anna laka alhamdi ya hanan ya bidi usimawati wal arq ya dhal jalali wal ikram ya hayyu ya qayyum. Allahumma salli wa salli wa baraka ala sayyidina wa habibina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayn wa aafina fi man aafayn wa tawallana fi man tawallayn wa barik lana fi ma a'atayn wa qina sharra ma qatayn inna ka tafdi wa la yubta alayn inna hu la yadillu man walayn wa la yadillu man hadayn tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayn Allahumma rabbana la tuzid qulubana ba'd idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma inna ka anta al-wahhab Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin wa adhil al-shirk wa al-mushrikin Allahumma ansur muslimin fi kulli makan ya huyub ya aziz Allahumma rabbana la Allahumma rabbana اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعف أن اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع لنا تب علينا يا ملنا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين اللهم جعلنا من التوابين وجعلنا من المتطهرين وجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين وجعلنا من القليل يا رحم الرحيمين اللهم جعلنا من أهل القرآن اللهم جعلنا من أهل القرآن اللهم جعلنا من أهل اللهم أجرنا من النار يا أرحم الراحمين وقنا عذاب النار يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة في الدوس الأعلى اللهم اكرم المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات الله سبحانه وتعالى the only true God the only one deserving of worship يا الله we ask you to accept all of our days in this Ramadan يا الله we ask you to be people who come out the other side of this month better than we were when we started يا الله سبحانه وتعالى we ask you to be people who can 
continue to read and understand your book. People who learn self-control and implement it in our lives and keep it until you take our souls. Ya Allah, we ask you to be people of Jannah. Ya Allah, protect us from the fire of hell. Ya Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma arina al-haqqa, haqqa, wa rizqan al-tiba'a, wa arina al-baqila, baqila, wa rizqan al-shinaba, Allahumma arina al-ashiyara, kama hiya. Ya Allah, al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Oh, the one who is the control of the hearts, keep our hearts firm on the religion of Islam. Allahumma salli, wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina, wa habibina Muhammadin, wa ala adi, wa sahbihi, ajma'in, wa rahmatullahi. I believe you have a few announcements before we start.